can hear Jesus say, Father, forgive. I can hear Jesus say, Father, forgive. I can hear Jesus say, Father, forgive. What a thing he did and love has come. Make a beggar rich, can set the prisoner free. I know he can do it for you. God knows he did it for me. I can see love. Love is all I want to show you. Love. Love's the only way to go. Love. Love is all a man might need to know. Yes, I know. I can see Peter putting away his sword. I can see Peter put away his sword. Won't fight no more cause love has come. Love has come. Love has come. And he's giving me hope to carry on. God's richest peace and blessings to you today as we gather on this Lord's Day to once again receive his gifts and to return our service back to him. Uh, I always get a little nostalgic around uh, this time of year, um, so I'll be using a couple of uh, Rich Mullins songs, the first, uh, Hope to Carry On, which certainly uh, fits our theme today from Paul's letter from Philippians to Press On. Uh, but uh, Rich Mullins back in 95, a great songwriter and a Christian artist. Uh, was killed in a car accident, and he's always been one of my favorites. So usually around this time of year, I kind of get a little nostalgic and kind of play some of his songs from time to time. So we'll be using a couple of those songs uh, in our worship uh, today. But if you're worshiping with us online, uh, you have reached uh, Trinity Lutheran Church at tlckeen.org uh, here in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, we're glad to have you. And um, if you would like to uh, get access to the worship folder today, as well as also a printed copy of our sermon, um, plus some other worship resources throughout the week, then please go to uh, tlckeen.org, and all of those things would be uh, available to you. But for those that are here today, uh, we worship and thank God for your presence today, and just ask the Lord's blessings on our worship as we come to receive his gifts. As we continue to worship then, uh, I invite you, for those that uh, are able, to please stand as we join together in the invocation uh, which is on page two of your worship folders. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, that stock, that your right hand planted. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O God, our Father, since you have set forth the way of life for us in your beloved Son, we confess with shame our slowness to learn of him, our failure to follow his guidance, and our reluctance to bear the cross. We acknowledge that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and know in our hearts that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Have mercy on us and forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us for all that is amiss in our lives as we continually break your commands. Forgive us that we have not always been fruitful plantings in your vineyard. Have mercy on us and forgive us, O Lord. Upon this, your confession. And by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I, as a fellow redeemed in Jesus, and as is called an ordained servant in this place, announce his forgiveness to you. And I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, 
and may your whole spirit and soul and body kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Sometimes the night is beautiful Sometimes the sky was so far away Sometimes it seemed to stoop so close You could touch it but your heart would break Sometimes the morning came too soon Sometimes the day could There was so much work left to do And so much you'd already done Oh God, you are my God And I will ever praise you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever praise you I will see Sometimes I think of Abraham, how one star he saw had been lit for me. He was a stranger in this land, I am that no less than he, and on the road to righteousness, sometimes the climb can be so I may falter in my steps, but never beyond your reach, oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you, oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you, I will see be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you offered your only son to die for us and so he became the source and the goal of our faith. When times are difficult, we are assailed by guilt and sin. And when we are overcome in times of grief and sorrow, keep us strong in the faith, enabling us to continue to run the race, to press on in faith, and so reach our heavenly goal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. In our scripture reading for today, uh, we focus on the epistle reading, uh, which we've been doing somewhat of a uh, lecture 
lectio continua of Paul's epistles throughout this season of um, uh, Trinity, the Pentecost season, I should say. The old Trinity was called Trinity, season of Trinity. But today uh, we reflect on Philippians, which is sort of the uh, epistle reading for last couple Sundays and a couple coming up. But this is from Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 4 and following. If anyone else thinks that he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but from that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, and becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind and straining towards what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our catechetical reflection today, we reflect on the second article of the Apostles' Creed, along with its explanation from the small catechism. We confess the second article of the Creed. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sin, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own, live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Thanks be to God. I find we constantly are needing assurances of such things in our lives. Just the history of our country was sort of rewritten for a time Uh, with our own president now, uh, with uh, COVID and uh, his wife as well, and we remember them in our prayers today. But I think of all of the situations and circumstances that we face where things are uh, so easily turned on a dime, as we say, where Paul gives us this wonderful affirmation in chapter 3 of Philippians. He says, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, for you uh, literature people, uh, people that are schooled in literature, uh, you'll be very familiar with uh, Edgar Allan Poe's El Dorado. First stanza of that says, Gaily bedight, a gallant knight in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long singing a song in search of El Dorado. Such are those opening lines where the person seems to be searching for this utopian place, longing for an escape from this world's cares. A knight searches intensely 
for some relief. But he is grossly disappointed. Whereupon meeting a pilgrim shadow in Poe's poem, inquiring of such where a place might be found, the best that this guide could offer is to just keep riding over the mountains of the moon and down the valley of the shadow. Ride, boldly ride, the shade replied, if you seek El Dorado. Whereby life truly fulfilled in Poe's estimation, and if you read some of his other things, which are pretty dark, Sort of an uncertain and hopeless proposition. But not for the child of God. Wherein today, our Savior bids us to press on, press on. Not as if we had no direction in life or where we're left alone in this this mean old world or left to ourselves and our own devices to make our way. But rather in the joy and the confidence of knowing the certainty of certainties. A Savior who not only enjoins us to run the race, but then promises to see us through to its blessed end. Therefore, redeemed of the Lord, let us cast the priorities of our lives, and even our very lives themselves, in the light of him who died and rose and will most certainly see us home. Press on, church. Press on, child of God. Press on. Amen. Well, our theme today for today's sermon is not an unfamiliar one in Scripture. In fact, if you've been following my devotions this week, they've all kind of centered on various sports figures who have endured various uh, uncertainties uh, to finish the race, as it were. But we draw plenty of that from Scripture itself, where, for instance, the aged Solomon in chapter 9 of 11, chapter 9, verse 11 of Ecclesiastes said this. He said, again, I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, or riches to the intelligent, nor favor to those with knowledge, but time and chance, he says, happen to them all. Or Jeremiah in chapter 12 of his uh, prophecy says that if you have raced with men on, on foot and they have wearied you, how will you compete with horses? And even Paul, as he gets to the end of his life in 1 Timothy, writes this. He says, with all confidence, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. 1 Timothy 4 where it's a race, despite its hardships, that the apostle is thrilled to run. Sixteen times in the book of Philippians, joy or some variation of the word is used. What could he be so happy about? Even as he sits and he stares out of his prison cell, that the Philippians had come to believe the gospel. That the certainty of their faith did not rest upon the circumstances of their lives or how they felt about themselves at any given time. The joy that even Paul was in prison knew that the gospel still had and could have its full effect in their lives, even in suffering. Redeemed of the Lord, it is a joy that is ours also. That since the day of your baptism, or the day that you met Jesus, or Jesus met you, it's been a race to the finish, where by that faith that he has worked in you, by the Holy Spirit, you have been set on the course. The race now even being run. Go on your mark. Get set. Go. (laughs) where it is a course that's not so easily run. Amen? For me, it's often the little things that get to me the most. Like little thorns or like a rock in my shoe. Especially during these last months, it's been the petty things that have come to distract me the most, that cause me the most annoyance in life. What is it for you, child of God? Those things that hinder your run, your desire to press on in Christ, 
Those things that the writer to the Hebrews says in chapter 12 that is so easily entangle and ensnare. Where in each one of us is running some kind of race. Each one of us is pressing on. Each and every one of us are somewhere on the track. Somewhere in the 26.2. Where the tug of this world, its values, offerings are strong. The goings on of our lives complicate things. We're grieving here. We're laid low. Our family and friends are dying. Our bodies are aching and aging. Some of us emotionally overwhelmed to the point of being left for dead. Left only to hope that at some point we might have strength to get back into the game. During these times, what makes for courage? What makes for strength? What makes for the hope to carry on? With the temptation to shrink back as ever before us, how is it that we press on? First, we come to the starting line in whatever state we are in. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Wherein for Paul, it's a matter of possessing some of the best gifts of God that he could give, an Israelite of Israelites, schooled in the word of God. For us, it may be different, where we may not be feeling so confident in God's promises and gifts. Instead, we come to his house today as though limping to the starting line, feeling broken or worn down by what life has thrown at us. Paul writes, whatever I had gain, in other words, whatever was to my profit, I counted as loss. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Where here we are brought, once again, straight back to Christ, straight to the one who not only redeems and rescues us, but strengthens and sustains us. Have you not known? Isaiah says in chapter 40, Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting. He does not grow faint or weary. He gives power to the faint, so that they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. That in whatever condition, whatever dreams lay broken at our feet, whatever our fears, our disappointments, our failings, our hurts. Jesus says, lay at my feet. Let me bind up your wounds, pouring on oil and wine in abundance. Wherein secondly, we check the baggage. We check that distress and that weariness and that pain and that brokenness at the door of Christ's righteousness. Wherein Paul pens by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them as rubbish, for three things, that we may gain Christ and be found in him, that we may know him in the power of his resurrection, and that by any means possible we might attain the resurrection from the dead. The goal is clear. Even in our suffering, which we may well have to bear, I know for me personally, in times like this, I usually turn to music like Rich Mullins or if you check the playlists on my, my iPhone, it's, it's, they're titles like Carry On or Live Free or Die <laughs> or U2, the group U2, Belief. The songs that tell the story when I'm laid low that I have even as a ringtone on my phone. Carry on, wayward son. Carry on. But in times like these, we need strong medicine. Wherein for those who possess Christ, or better, who are themselves possessed by Christ, there is no loss. There is no uncertainty, especially with him as the final goal and the ultimate prize that lays before us where by this far-reaching bounds of grace, we can lay it down if by the gracious will carry the load. Wherein thirdly, by that same grace 
As sure as we lay it down, we have a Savior who takes us up. And so we take him up. Prophet Isaiah, I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Art Carey, who was a sports writer for the Boston Globe, once wrote that the real goal of running something like the Boston Marathon is not winning as it is finishing. Just finishing the contest with yourself, knowing that you have done what you have set out to do. To do just that, to break the tape, to finish well. What is it that we need? What is it that God gives to us by way of his means? Well, first, it's that clear vision of Jesus that we've been talking about. Not that I have already obtained this, he says, but I press on because Christ Jesus has made me his own. It's that clear vision of Christ. It's that clear vision of the goal, forgetting what lies behind, straining towards what lies ahead. I press on that go for the goal of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Wherein what else is it that God gives us to press on? Well, like a runner, it is like the water and the hydration. How important that is for runners as they run, but so also for us as the sign of the cross was once pressed upon your head and upon your forehead and upon your heart, and it still marks you as one that is redeemed by Jesus Christ. That has not changed. And so as Christians, we return to it often, that stream in which we swim, that solid declaration of who you are. Press on, press on, press on as you follow another of the directional signs which are important when you're running. You've got to know where the track is. And God's word gives us that. It clearly lays it out. As the Holy Spirit presses that word into our ears and into our hearts, sounding forth that enduring song of his forgiveness and grace, and so sit often at Jesus' feet. Portals of prayer, daily bread, take the word in whatever form, drink from the well, set aside time with your Savior, guard it, keep it, press on, press on. Press on to make haste to his table to be fed, and how you'll oftentimes see runners munching on an orange or a banana. For us, it's the word of God, and for us, it's the table that's been set where your Savior's body and blood are pressed to your lips with the full assurance of your acceptance and your forgiveness and your calling in him. Press on, press on. Press on where finally we get to encourage one another. And how important as they run are the people standing on the side of the road with signs and clapping to urge them on. And do we not have this in the mutual conversation and the consolation of the brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ? So great a cloud of witnesses. There's a reason why they call it the divine service. It's what God renders to us, but then what we render back to him and to our brothers and sisters in the communion. I believe in one holy Christian church. I believe in the communion of saints. I believe in you and in the encouragement that you bring. Do not give up the habit of meeting together. Press on. Press on. All in the sustenance that you will finish and the assurance that you will finish. And does not Jesus already give us the victory that he has won through his death and his resurrection? He alone is our destiny. Press on. Press on. One of my favorite scenes in cinema is the scene that takes place at the end of the movie Gladiator. It's rated R and so it's not for children, obviously, but at the end, Russell Crowe's character, Maximus, has a friend by the name of Juba. And Juba has just symbolically buried his friend in the dirt. And with a joyous gleam in his eye, and with a full smile, he says to his deceased friend, I will see you again. Not yet. Not yet. Press on, Christian knight. Press on. Let Jesus be that goal. 
He most certainly is the prize. It is only he who by grace will see us safely home. We're by another poem, this one by Charles Wesley. We are enjoined and we are encouraged. Captain of Israel's host and guide, all who seek the land above. Beneath thy shadow we abide, the cloud of thy protecting love. Our strength, thy grace. Our rule, thy word. Our end, the glory of the Lord. Press on, church. Press on, child of God. Press on. Press on. Amen. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. For our hymn of response, we turn to hymn 664, Fight the Good Fight, 664. join together in a uh, time of prayer, and uh, we want to continue to remember all of God's people, and uh, if you are watching online and you would like to submit a prayer request, uh, you may do so uh, by contacting us here at the church, um, and uh, we continue, uh, continually update that prayer list for those in various needs, and we do have quite a growing list of people who are in various stages of uh, of, of grief right now, just in terms of um, illness and surgery and the like. And uh, so instead of like going through that whole list today, we'll pause and let you obviously uh, lift up those prayers as well. Uh, but certainly uh, also we want to add to those prayers, uh, uh, you know, as we enter into this um, uh, election season and how tense everything seems to be. Uh, certainly what complicates that is uh, our president's um, uh, illness. And uh, we certainly want to commend him and certainly our country to, uh, to the Lord's care, uh, that his will certainly would be done. And it will. It will. So with that, uh, if you're following in the worship folder, uh, the prayers are on page 9, um, and uh, we join together in prayer. Almighty God, since you have granted us the favor to call on you with one accord, and have promised that where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are in the midst of them. Full na fulfill now the prayers of your servants granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
As children in your kingdom, we give you thanks for the gift of word and water and baptism. And we ask you to strengthen our faith in the food of Christ's body and blood at your table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the life that you've given us in the world that you created for us. And we ask you for wisdom and skill in caring for your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As citizens of this nation, we give you thanks for the freedoms and the liberties that we enjoy. Guide us and our leaders in making right decisions concerning all people, and that we would be supportive of our leaders and careful to obey the laws of our government. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As this weekend is Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday, we pray for the mission of that LWML to assist each woman of our congregation, our synod and nation, in affirming her relationship with the triune God, that she is enabled to use her gifts in ministry and to the people of the world, and to support global missions through the gathering of our mites and providing of mission grants. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As members of this congregation, we give you thanks for this community of faith that nurtures us in word and sacrament. Help us to be faithful in worship, attentive in Bible study, and helpful as disciples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, there are many needs for which we bring to you today, and especially for those that uh, have special needs in terms of uh, illness. Uh, Father, we lift them up to you and ask your blessings upon each of them that we now name in, your, in, in our hearts. Father, heal and strengthen them and bless them, Lord. We also pray for those in various stages of grief and mourning and ask your blessings upon them. We pray for the families of this congregation as we pray this week for the Kroll family, the Dabrowski families, and the Derjou family. And we ask your blessings upon each of them, gracious Lord, that you would grant peace and blessings to their home. As we pray for all of the families and members and friends of this congregation. Father, we also continue to pray for our school and we rejoice in our increasing enrollment and we ask your blessings upon all of those that are involved, teachers, parents, gracious Father, our children, for their health and safety as well. We pray for those who celebrate birthdays this week, for Carson and Peggy and Jean and Henry, and we ask your blessings upon them as we continue even to pray for the state of our country and its upcoming elections. We're into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our service, our online service, continues uh, with the closing hymn, uh, which is In Christ Alone. the 
peace and blessings to you once again, and uh, we welcome you and just pray the Lord's blessings on your week. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and to hear uh, how the Lord is blessing you, and uh, certainly any prayers that you have, we would like to uh, certainly pray for you as well. So God's richest peace and blessings to you, and just have a blessed week in the Lord from Trinity Lutheran Church.